Today we're gonna to be talking about how to use Swift packages to add some modularity to your project. Let's get started. So first things first, let's go ahead and create a new project. This is gonna be a new app here. Uh, this is gonna be, let's call it whatever. And then let's go ahead and say next. Let's create. Now to bring some understanding to why we're doing this, right? So let's say I have a button. This button is absolutely crucial to my brand. It's something that I use not only in the iOS application, but the Mac OS application. And maybe I have separate applications altogether that would use it, such as like an admin app or an employer facing app or an internal app, or, you know, so on and so forth. So that's where these would come in that you have this whatever button or this thing you want accessible in every project that you use. And so now when we want to use our whatever button, we can put this right here, whatever button, add an action, and we can make it so it prints hello, like so. And so now we have our button, you click on it, it says whatever, and it prints hello. But like I said, this is the very basic start to a button that you want accessible everywhere. So let's copy this, let's delete it. Let's say file, new, packages. And then this package is going to be a new library. We'll call this my whatever, UI, for example. Uh, inside of the package here, you'll see that it says the name is whatever UI, the library is whatever UI, and it targets, if you go to sources here, you'll see that it says whatever UI. So this specific library is targeting this file structure right here. So if we wanna add some button to whatever UI, I say file, new file, and then this is going to be my whatever button, like so. We can import Swift UI and add our button. Now you'll see that it throws some errors. So let's go back over to our package. Let's say platforms. So the supported platforms that we want here are going to be, let's say iOS and Mac OS. So we can say .iOS version, let's say version 16 or later. Then we can say .mac OS version and let's say 13 or later or something along those lines, right? Now, if we go back to our button here, those errors should disappear. And so now we have our package created, we're good to go. Uh, now let's add the package into our Xcode project. So in order to do that, let's go back over here to our folder. Let's create a new folder here. I'm gonna call this whatever UI. And then inside of here, I'm going to drag and drop the contents of the package that I just created into that new file structure that I just created. Now the reason I do that is because with GitHub specifically, if you just drag over this file in its entirety, it will not recognize that that change has happened. So I create a new file and I add the packages like so. And so now we're good to go. But now I can take this file, just drag this file over all the way over to my whatever project. And we have our Swift package accessible right inside of a project like so. And so now if I wanna use this, all I have to do is go over to my content view I can say import whatever UI. It will not recognize this because I need to go back over here to my build phases. I need to say link binary with libraries here. Add in my whatever UI, like so. And now I have my whatever button. However, you'll notice that it's not recognizing it still. And that's because I need to start declaring things that are stored inside of a Swift package as public, package, or private totally depending on what you want. But this whatever button, I want it to be accessible everywhere. So I'm gonna say public struct whatever button. We have the body. This also needs to be declared as public. However, you'll notice if I go back over to my content view, it's still gonna say there's no accessible initializer. So we need to also add in a public initializer, like so. So now we have public initializer, and now you can say whatever button, it's gonna print hello build and run this, and you'll see that our button is here, and it is printing hello, like so. And so this makes it really easy that if I ever wanted to, I can take this whatever UI and use it in other projects. So let's close this out. Let's create a new Xcode project here. I'm gonna say this is my whatever admin. Let's create this on my desktop. And then now if I want whatever UI inside of here, I can go to my whatever project right here drag this over into here, and we now have whatever UI inside of whatever admin. And if we want to use that button, all we have to do is go back over to our build phases, link binary with libraries, add that in like so, go to our content view, and then now we can say our whatever button, action, and then we need to also import whatever 
UI in order to be able to access that. And now we can print hello to, and now we have that button accessible like so. Now, not only is this like a little bit cleaner, uh, you know, everything is now compartmentalized so that if you wanted like a whatever backend or a whatever uh, AI or, you know, if I wanted to put that over there, I can have different packages for each of those things and therefore import whatever I need at any given time. But it also offers this expandability. It, exp it allows you to create multiple projects that can use all the same elements. So while this tutorial in and of itself is just talking about a simple button, eventually this could become your entire backend is import whatever backend or import, you know, whatever AI or so on and so forth. And you might get to the point that everything is segmentized into these different types of imports uh, to make your project a little bit cleaner. But there you go. That's just like a very small understanding on how to use Swift packages uh, to allow some more like modularization inside of your project. So hope that helped. See you in the next one.